What's up everyone out there at Full Time Musician? My name is Alec Lehrman. I am a musician and guitarist based out of Los Angeles, California. I'm very excited to be here with you guys today. I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Moved to Chicago after my undergrad in Madison, Wisconsin. I did not study music. And when I got to Chicago, I was kind of hustling to catch up with all the phenomenal musicians there, people out of Berkeley or people that just grew up there and been doing it their whole lives. And after a couple of years, I was able to get my bearings and become a full-time musician, doing everything from the gig at, you know, on, at the cafe or touring in front of whatever, thousands, tens of thousands of people. So the gig, it was very dynamic and shifted all the time. You can't really have an ego because one day you'll, you could be in front of a lot of people and some days, not so much. That's my upbringing and I moved out here in 2000, almost 2019, so like just one month before. I've been here for about two years, two and a half years, and I've been loving it ever since. Been able and fortunate to work with some really cool, awesome artists and producers and musicians and yeah, it's been a, it's been a great ride, so. Yeah. All right, so my career, as far as LA goes, the past two years or so, I moved here and I was, I knew a couple people from Chicago, uh, but mainly I would go out and just hustle every day, every night, you know, getting to know the scene, getting to know the places, the venues, where people hung out, and just being out all the time, you know, just acquaint me with the musicians and the scene here. After that, so I moved here in December 2018, so a couple months in, maybe March, April, I was fortunate enough to cross paths with the Kanye West team. I was working with them. I did the Sunday service Coachella, played guitar for that. Feel very fortunate to have been a part of that just iconic moment in history. From that, a couple things started to happen. Um, I was able to get some guitar and gear deals with LSL, Reunion Blues, um, the Gopher Wood, which is this guitar right here, acoustic guitars. Um, and then it started working with other artists. Uh, like I currently am working with this uh, phenomenal singer, artist. Uh, her name is Sabrina Claudio. And yeah, there's been some awesome stuff along the way sprinkled in as well. Just amazing artists, producers, musicians, videographers. Like there's so many creative people in LA and it's just, been an awesome, awesome ride, and I feel like it just kind of keeps getting better every day. So. so I am here with everyone at Full Time Musician, and what we're gonna do today, we're gonna uh, go over this interview, and then I'm gonna play two songs. One is a Nora Jones tune called Don't Know Why, and then I'm gonna give you a little funk gospel kind of guitar track, and I hope you guys all enjoy it. So my experience as a touring musician dates back to about 2015, so it's about 2021 now. I toured with this band called J.C. Brooks in the Uptown Sound. Uh, so it's like more funk, soul, that old school kind of Motown stacks, that kind of gritty, soulful thing. And you know, we did the States a lot, some Canada, we did Europe, France, Spain, that kind of thing back in 2015, 2016, that was a blast. The experience on the day-to-day -day could vary. You know, you could be off for a couple days, you know, which you can spend as the time doing whatever you want. Or you can go sleep all day if you want, or you can go, you know, explore the town. I was probably somewhere in the middle, you know, you probably store up on sleep and then you go explore the town. And obviously this is all pre-COVID, so you can do whatever you want. It's more exhausting than you think, because you, you know, think, oh, you're only playing you know, for 90 minutes at night, you know, say that's your gig. Your whole day is focused on getting that 90 minutes in order. So, you know, say you wake up or say you're on a bus, whatever, you wake up, you might have to drive or fly to another city. You have to go and you have to set up and sound check. And then by the time that's done, you have to eat dinner and then you come and you dress and like, boom, the show happens. And then afterwards you got to you know, tear down or the crew tears down. And by the time you get to, you know, the bus or the hotel or wherever you're staying, it might be 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and then you might have to wake up at 6 a.m. and do it again. So that it can be, when things are moving quickly, it can be tiring, but, you know, it's it's worth it. It's just, uh, that's, that's kind of the experience. I think my, I was misjudging it, like, oh, it'll be kind of like easy, like it, you just play for 90 minutes, you know, and it's not, 
it, it's more involved than that. It's all the things you don't see behind, uh, you know, in the background that's happening that you like to make that 90 minutes happening. It's a, it's a full, full production. So it's something to think about and something to kind of keep in mind when you, if you were to be considering this kind of career path or if you're just interested in, you know, chatting about it. So. So since COVID has happened, I think something unique has happened. A lot of the live touring musicians have gone and started learning about production, myself included, and recording techniques, all this stuff. And I think it's, there's, there might be a little bit of a shift in the culture. So before all this happened, you know, people were on the road and you played guitar, you played drums and it was on the road. Some people were also studio musicians, but maybe there was, you know, you were either one or the other. Some people are both or, you know, but I think the live playing has a very specific look and texture that has to happen. The aesthetic as far as like you have to look a certain way for the music that you're presenting. You know, it's a show, it's a performance, so it has to be believable. Um, and then your, you know, your tones and everything, they can be a little bit limited in the sense that like in the studio, you can use production techniques, you know, you can reverse a sound or, you know, you can, you can, the sky's the limit with your imagination. But for live playing, it's a little more in the box. You have to be, you know, perfect with your execution. But, you know, it could be like your clean sound, your distortion sound, your ambient sound. You maybe have some modulations, this kind of thing. But it's, you know, it's very kind of like straightforward. You're performing the recorded version. And I think what's so cool about, you know, exploring some of the recording world, which I've been doing since I lived in Chicago, but now, especially with COVID happening, um, diving into it, it's a very, um, you got to think a bit, think a little bit differently. Like sometimes musicians, we think of things in terms of like how complicated it is, like, like the harmony, for instance, or the rhythm, like, oh, it's in seven, eight, or this harmony is a crazy harmony. But to the average listener, like the average, you know, Joe or Jane or whoever you're presenting it to, they don't understand that what they get, though they're experts at, that we might not be experts at, are um, emotions. Like, how does something feel? So this song makes me want to get up and dance. This makes song makes me want to, like, take a nap. Or this is the song I want to wake up to. So identifying those moods and being able to be like, I can play a piece that will make you want to tap dance, you know, or whatever. Like I like understanding what emotion you're tr trying to come across is huge. And knowing how to do that is in the studio is really, um, really a cool, useful technique that I think uh, sometimes live players might forget about myself included. So I think the difference is that studio is you're kind of, you're, you're a little more, um, focus you know it doesn't have to be one so busy uh, and the rain the arrangement can be more sparse and you can use tools and techniques given to you at whatever studio you're at or whatever your DAW um, is and you can really manipulate sound pitch it up pitch it down reverse it sample it whatever whatever and it creates unique sounds and textures that at the end of the day just give an, an emotional response so I don't know if one is better or worse touring or studio I I enjoy both, but um, it's been a really cool, you know, ride just experiencing that as far as COVID, it, you know, is concerned, you know, diving into the, the studio realm of guitar playing, production, songwriting and everything. So. so if you're trying to dive into this home recording, you know, rabbit hole, because it's it goes deep and it never ends. But if you're trying to just get started, I think a good place would just be have a an audio interface like a, what I use is a UAD Apollo and a MacBook, and then some headphones and some monitors, and that's about it. I mean, you can get away with less, but it works for basically everything you want to do. You can buy plugins and all that stuff down the line. But if you just really wanted to get started, you could even go cheaper and get a Focusrite, you know, or just something very. Um, modest as far as like the interface goes. It's a lot of trial and error as well. I'm not, you know, I don't claim, sit here to claim to be, you know, an expert or, you know, the greatest producer of all time. Far from it. But I think uh, it's a worthwhile endeavor for every musician to know, you know, tones, frequency, say, you know, there's translation too. Say like you're, you're messing around in the studio and you, you know, you notice some harsh frequencies or, or something sounds like woofy, you know, you're playing the guitar and it's all like sounds like underwater. Well, 
what that is is like an EQing problem or something, and this could translate live too. Say there's a, a buzz or some unpleasant sound, well, your ear will start to notice like, oh, take out, you know, 2K or whatever. And, and your ability to communicate to sound people or audio engineers, or it'll just make you that much more of a well-rounded person. So there is definitely some overlap and like some cross training that goes on with all this. I like to record, it really depends on the song and the, the vibe of the song. <clears throat> so I might go straight in clean, like Prince, you know, or that kind of thing. If it's a funk funk song, I might, you know, use pedals or plugins. But say I was using this, I might go in. I have a Strymon Iridium, which is like an amp simulator. It's an impulse response. You guys can check it out and look it up. It's what I use. A lot of people use Kempers, Axe Effects, Helix, whatever works for you. Guitar rig. There's there's so many different tools. It's uh, whatever sound you're hearing in your head and you want to communicate. And then, you know, just having like a little MIDI keyboard too doesn't hurt, you know, if you have little pads to play on. That's just kind of me um, giving a little intro and I'm sure other people could take it, you know, way, way further down the rabbit hole. So some of the preamps and the settings that I have for the songs that you'll be listening to today, I was using a in the box the, with the Apollo. Um, I was using as a preamp a Neve 1073 into a the the LA-2A, which is a compressor, colors the sound very nicely. And then I was using I actually wasn't using any Kempers or Helix or any of that stuff. I was just using uh, Corey Wong's Neural DSP plugin. I think it sounds great. It works for the textures and the the vibe we're going for. And th those are some of my favorite tools as far as soundscaping and sound shaping. I think. Sound Toys, a company has really, really great inspiring stuff. It's, you know, as far as production and making your guitar sound a certain way or, you know, anything, keyboards, vocals, doesn't matter. They have really, really inspiring stuff. And for me, that, that's what I use a lot is Sound Toys. But there's so many, so many different plugins and production, you know, techniques. I'm sure you, people could just leave a comment and see what, you know, what kind of, what are your favorite plugins? What do you use? What do you, you know, inspires you? You know, there's always new technology coming out every day as well. So I, you know, by the time this comes out, I could be behind in the next coolest thing. So, but that's what I've been using for this uh, setup and all the audio you're hearing. So if you guys are interested at all in hearing what I'm talking about, as far as these plugins, any audio samples, I'm using everything in a different video. You guys can click the link below. Uh, Nora Jones and another one, which is a, a funk track in B flat. So check it out. Let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you found any of this useful, uh, appreciate it. if you guys follow me on Instagram. It's just my name, Alec Lehrman. On YouTube, it's Alec Lehrman Music my website, Alec Lehrman Music, so feel free to reach out, get in touch um, for anything from just talking shop to guitar lessons or, you know, anything, just, just get in touch, appreciate it. And uh, I got a couple videos dropping uh, following this, this interview. It'll be a Nora Jones cover as well as a little funk track, so I hope you guys dig that. Please let me know what you think. Thank you. <laughs>